What's up folks, welcome to another episode of the 10 Horse Monty YouTube channel. We got kind of creepy conditions out here. We got some serious storms moving in this afternoon. I probably only got maybe two hours to fish if I'm lucky. I already had a little bit of rain, got more rain coming. It's just kind of real spotty and then a major line of nasty storms is gonna hit. But it was my day off, I wanted to get out here for a couple hours and we're throwing a chatterbait today guys. Just covering water, springtime. You know, I got like a bluegill colored chatterbait. I got a white colored chatterbait, actually a jack, Z-Man jackhammer. I've got, this is a 3 8 ounce. I've got a little hogs, custom baits, razor back on the back as a trailer. And we're going to cover a little water, see if we can catch a few fish before it gets hairy out here. So let's go. We'll talk a little bit about what we're figuring out on the way. Water temps right now are about 57 degrees. <laughs> Chatterbox, baby. A little bit of time before the storm comes in. There we go. Need some fish. They're shallow. It's kind of black and black and blue and green pumpkin. Fish ate it. There we go. Nice fish, man. Nice fish. It's fun. We're getting fat. We're getting fat. We got about an hour or two before the nasty stuff hits you can hear it brewing a little thunder in the background stone chatterbait it's kind of a blue green pumpkin got a little hogs trailer on there there it is they're definitely up here tight folks Little hump bag, man. Right? Yeah, yeah. Humpy. Big old humpy, man. Go. Give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This was one of those days that was very, very eerie. I was on edge all morning long. I knew I didn't have a lot of time. There were tornado watches in the area, storms were brewing. So I put a chatterbait in my hand. Chatterbait is a great way to cover water in the spring and produce bites, just run in specific high percentage areas. And that's what I did. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about chatterbait, just a few of the trailers I like to use, kind of color selection based on the water conditions and the cloud cover, that type of deal. Right off that little piece of wood. Right off that little piece of wood. All right. Just got a cover of water. All right, there we go, little guy. So I'm trying out this new trailer. This is a Hogs Custom Baits Razorback, I believe. It's kind of a twin tail grub deal. It works perfect on this chatterbait. This is a tilapia color. There are a ton of bladed jigs out on the market and I've tried several of them, but I keep coming back to the Z-Man version of the bladed jig, the original chatterbait, not so much the original chatterbait, but the chatterbait lineup. And the jackhammer is one that I've been throwing around the last couple of years. It is a great bait. It's expensive. It's like 17 bucks, but I think of it like this. Very rarely do I lose a chatterbait. This is something that I'm going to have for several years and it does have advantages. The components are more high end. But the main advantage of this, I think, is it starts up a lot quicker and it continues to thump at a slower speed. So when you make that cast, you get this thing going, it starts to thump right off the bat. And if you really slow it down, it keeps that thumping going at a slower, slower pace than a lot of the other ones that I've tried. Having said that, I still fish the original Chatterbait quite a bit. It's a lot more affordable. This is like a six to seven dollar price point where the jackhammer is like 16 to 17 dollars and a lot of people are throwing jackhammer they don't throw the chatterbait the original chatterbait quite as much and the original chatterbait has a different vibration different sound different water displacement than the jackhammer so if you're on a heavily pressured bottle body of water and people are throwing the jackhammer 
it's a pretty good idea to pick up the original Chatterbait just to try, just to see. The other one I like is the Elite. You know, the Elite has a little bit different line tie. It's a pretty solid Chatterbait. So that's the three that I really throw. And let's talk a little bit about just color. So early spring, I really tend to lean towards the white, some variation of white. You know, this is just flat white. I've got a little Reaction Innovations, a little dipper on there, white trash color. And this I believe is called Spot Remover. It's got some sharp trues, some kind of translucent white. It's got a little bit of that black striped skirt material in there. And I've got a little hogs custom bait, swim bait on there. Early in the year, it seems like the fish are really keying in on shad. You know, in the wintertime, shad is a key forage. And I think they're still, as they move up shallow, I think they're still in that shad frame of nine. So I've had a lot of success, whether the water's clear or dirty in early spring, well, late winter really, to early spring on the white chatterbait. Go. Back this little cut, man. They're not biting hard. They are not biting hard. Super soft bite. Got it though. I had a shad following this chatterbait. It was poking and I had a bite right here. And I had a shad and then I threw back in there and I got this guy. Really cool looking fish. There he is. That's a good fish, guys. All right. Getting bigger. Keep changing chatterbait colors. No. Start out with the green pumpkin, then I went with kind of a black and bluish. And this is a, I don't know what they call this. It's like spot remover, I think. Clearwater minnow, maybe, I'm not sure. We just got a hogs three and a half inch swim bait on there. It's kind of a sight flash color. Nice chunky fish, marked up, looking good. It's fishing some offshore grass kind of stuff. Long point, flat points with grass off the end of it. The fish are getting really heavy right now really heavy once the water temperatures start to get up in the high 40s and low 50s the crawfish become active they start coming out of hibernation not that they're totally in hibernation but they just become more mobile they start showing themselves a little more and i think bass start switching from that shad based diet to a more crawfish based diet especially if you get some spring rain and the water muddies up this fire crawl color can be really dynamite it's ugly it doesn't make sense oranges and reds but for some reason, the fish key in on this color during the early spring. I mean, it's popular in rattle baits, crank baits, even spinner baits, and the bladed jig is no exception. So this is another color that you need to throw in your tackle box. There's a couple week period there where it really gets dynamite. As the water begins to warm up and it nears the pre-spawn period, bluegill become a huge food source for the bass. A lot of the bluegill, they winter out deeper, they start sliding up, they kind of interact. The bluegill and the bass kind of start mingling and unfortunately, the bluegill don't fare as well as the bass. As they go on the beds, the bluegill really become a food source. They're pesky and the bass try to run them off the beds. So a green pumpkin, chatterbait, and the black and blue, both of these colors mimic a bluegill really well. As far as trailers on a chatterbait, a little swim bait, a little craw, a little creature bait, or a fluke are really about all you need. One thing to be mindful of on the chatterbait trailer is the action. If you've got a bait that has too much action, a trailer that has too much action, it can deaden the actual action of the chatterbait. It offsets, it kind of fights this blade. So you want something that is not taking away from the blade most of the time. There are times when you really want it to go crazy and that's usually in a warm water period, but in the spring, you want something that's a little bit more subtle most of the time. And you want to pay attention to that action. Another thing that the trailer can do is cause a lot of lift. So if you're trying to keep that bait down, you want to make sure you have a trailer that doesn't have a lot of lift, that doesn't make that bait rise. If you're fishing super shallow, you may go the other way. You may want something that really keeps it up high in the water column and keeps it planing. But pay attention to that. That is really key. If you're using a swim bait trailer on a chatter bait, here's a little tip that will help you keep that bait down. There he is. Okay. All right, on the board. Little chatterbox. Action green pumpkin. Got a little hogs custom baits swim bait on the back of there. And what I've done 
the trim the paddle tail off of that. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know, it just gives it, it doesn't impede the blade action. Eh, decent fish. So this is all I did. I just took the paddle tail, took my scissors, and I just trimmed it down. And it kind of looks more like a hog farmer spunk shad. If you guys have seen the spunk shad, if you haven't, this is a really good swim bait trailer. It looks like this here. So it's like a little swim bait, but it doesn't have the actual paddle tail. It's just got this little floppy thing, got a lot of action. Another trailer that I really like on a chatterbait is the Zoom Speed Crawl. This is like a three inch crawl. It doesn't have a ton of lift. It's got a nice subtle action that complements the blade. Relatively inexpensive, and they come in a bunch of different colors. The Z Crawl is also a really good trailer. The Rage Bug by Strike King, excellent trailer. And one thing about this Rage Bug for coming through wood, you know, Chatterbait is notorious about getting hung up in wood. It's great around wood, but it can be very, very frustrating. So if you take a trailer that has this flat side, it has a tendency to come up over the wood. If you got a Swim bait like this, the swim bait wants to roll, right? It's just the way the shape of the trailer. It's gonna roll. You take this right here, this rage bug, something with a flat side on it. Z crawl's similar too, but it doesn't have a tendency to roll. So you're gonna be able to come through the uh, any laydowns and stuff quite a bit better. They make some chatter baits that are kind of designed for that. There is a Z-Man chatter bait that has this weed guard. So that's a decent option. You gotta set the hook a little bit harder with this one but it does come through grass and wood fairly well. And then they do make some, I'm not even sure what brand this is, but it's kind of like a swing head thing. It's got just an EWG hook on there. So you can actually Texas rig your plastic on there. And this does have that swing head action. So this is a great option for coming through um, heavy cover. Fish was right on that stick when we first turn the handle, boom. I think that fish is spawning. Yep, man. Chattery fish, man, it's getting sketchy out here. It's hard to relax. You got these storms brewing. It's hard to relax. There's some, these little grass clumps. There's little grass clumps and just casting out there and I'm trying to reel it and hit that stuff and just kind of pull it through it. You know, we can't really let the let the bait load up a lot of times you just want to let it load up and keep reeling and it snaps three but right right now the grass is kind of spongy it's it gets that algae on it um this is milfoil or coontail but making that cast and just reeling it real slow when you feel that grass a piece of grass come up just kind of feather it through that grass and a lot of times that's when you get your bite when you pop it off that grass fish are just kind of sitting in there and it's just a reaction they just kind of snatch it There he is. Let's get a bite. Let's get fish, guys. Just crush it. That's what we came for. Nice fish. Come here, buddy. There we go. Little chunky monkey funky. Yeah. Boy, it's brewing. I'm about out of time. About out of time. Just running this rocky area now, kind of back in the creek. That's a great bite. Kind of thread and these little pieces of grass, these little grass lanes. Got all these little lanes. These are just ambush points. I like to let that thing sink down there too a little bit. Just get it right on the base of the grass. This grass is real snotty right now, so it's hard to actually come through it, but you can work all the way around it. And they'll still come out and grab it. A lot of times they're sitting on that backside along that rip wrap. Kind of slow roll it down through that grass. Get a little bit of wind, it helps but you can definitely catch them in the slick water. As far as a rod and reel line setup, you want a rod that's got some tip, but also has backbone. A lot of times you're fishing around heavy cover, whether it be grass or wood, and you want to get that fish away, but you don't want it to be too stiff to where when he grabs it, you pull the bait away from him. So it's important to have that perfect balance. I mean, I've been throwing this rod here. I just discovered it this year. I've been throwing it around for almost two months. I did a video on it, like a review on it. Um, check that out if you haven't. This is the Virtus Jewel 
Red Diamond. Pretty sweet rod. Seven foot two, this is a swim jig rod, but it works great for uh, chatterbaits and spinnerbaits. It's got the right action. Really, really light, really well balanced. And I've been throwing it on, this is a Daiwa Tatula. Now this is an eight to one reel. I don't recommend an eight to one reel. Seven to one is perfect, but I got a good deal on this. So this is what I've got. And I've had to really, you know, slow myself down. I've had to pay attention to this because it really moves some line. So it's, I, I just gotta be mindful to slow down because I'm rolling it in too, too fast. 15 pound test. I like 15 pound tests all around on the chatterbaits. It just seems, some people will throw heavier line. I just kind of adjust my trailer and the weight of my chatterbait to the situation. If I wanted to stay up really shallow, I'll just put a little bit bigger trailer on there and I'll drop from like a half ounce to a three ounce. I throw a half ounce quite a bit. That's probably my go-to. But if I'm really throwing up shallow, like zero to four foot, I'm gonna drop down to that three eighths ounce and I'm gonna put something on there like the Z-Crawl that's got a little bit of lift. Conversely, if I need to fish out a little bit deeper, I'm just gonna bump up to a half ounce, put maybe a swim bait trailer on there. So you can make a lot of adjustments with the actual weight of the bait and the trailer. So 15 pound test, I think it gives it the most action. You get plenty of strength to get the fish out, but you still get um, enough, you don't have that line that's impeding the action of the bait. I think it's all around good line size. Here's a good illustration of what these fish are sitting in. You can see this kind of sparse grass. There's little lanes in the grass. We've got some rock right here. we got a little lay down. Fish are just kind of holding in these little uh, lanes. Slow rolling that chatterbait down through these lanes. Every once in a while you get a bite. Ooh, yeah. Good one. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. There we go. There we go, folks. That's what we came for, man. That is what we came for. It is sketchy out here, man. The stuff's kind of building, but keeping my head down, throwing that chatterbait, little hogs, custom baits, trailer on there. And that is a super nice quality fish, man. Super nice quality fish. That fish was in like two foot of water, guys. Just slow rolling that thing. It got heavy. I thought I was actually on a clump of grass. And I just kind of pulled back and she pulled back and that's what happens, man. Beautiful beautiful fish there are two very very important tips that i want to share with you if you haven't listened to anything else in this video pay attention right now these are a couple tips that are going to get you a lot more bites when fishing and chatterbait number one is retrieve rate retrieve speed i mentioned earlier i had an eight to one gear ratio reel it's a little too fast i had to slow down slowing down with the chatterbait is key it's imperative if you think about it this is a jig right it's a bladed jig it's a jig with a blade and the key is keeping it really, really slow to where you almost don't even feel this blade. So even though you don't feel this blade, it's still making a little bit of movement. And even if it's not making any movement, it's still a jig. It still has this jig profile. And everybody knows that swimming a jig, a swim jig is deadly. So if you take the blade out of this, you still have a swim jig. So don't be scared to fish this so slow that you don't actually feel that blade. That's really key. Most people are really moving that thing. They're burning it. The fish don't see it super, super slow as often. And a lot of times those fish are way down in that grass. If you're fishing grass, they're way down in there. They're on the bottom. They're in, say the grass is in six foot of water. They're not in that, a lot of times they're not in that upper, you know, third of water. A lot of times they're in negative mood. They won't come up and grab it. If you got the right conditions, yeah, they're going to be aggressive. They're going to come up and they're going to grab it. But a lot of times you're just going to swim this thing right over the fish and they're not even going to touch it. They're just going to look at it and let it go by. They've seen a lot of these. If you can get it down there in their face, get it down in that grass really, really deep, you're gonna get a lot more bites. Same thing with uh, wood if you're fishing lay downs, fishing docks, let it get down there. It's key. Number one. Little guy, it's a little mud spot right there. They're starting to bed up, man. There's some beds back here. It's pretty cool. It's early. Water's right around 60, but they are they are starting to pull up and make some beds.
fish are shallow. Come here, buddy. Fish is right underneath that tree. Probably on a bed. Probably on a bed. Thank you. Number two is varying the retrieve. You're getting it down. You're not just reeling it back straight. Just like you would fish a crankbait or a spinnerbait, it's very important to add little twitches. So you're reeling this thing in, you're gonna add a little rod twitch. You're gonna slow it down a little bit. You're gonna speed it up slightly, slow it down, add a little rod twitch. Just keep it, mix it up. It's very important to mix it up, give it a little bit of different look, give it that hunting action, make it look like it's deflecting off something. When you do come up to grass, You've made your cast, you're reeling it into grass, you feel that grass starting to load up. Just keep reeling. Keep reeling, let that rod load up. And a lot of times, if you've got the right rod, like this Virtus rod's really good about that. It's got that soft tip, but it's got that backbone. So when that rod loads up and you keep reeling, it'll pop free. A lot of times that's when you're gonna get your bites. If you're fishing in grass that's not quite as crisp, when you come up to it, just give it a little shake. Kind of pop it and then let it fall a little bit. Those fish a lot of times are relating to those grass clumps. And that is key. If you just reel it straight in and don't give it a lot of action, you're not gonna get as many bites. You're still gonna get some bites, especially on those days when they're aggressive. But if you will just use these two tips, make sure it's low and slow, and make sure you're adding some action, letting it load up, popping it through that grass, you're gonna get more bites. There he is. Oh my, that's a good one, guys. Oh, big as I thought, that thing is freaking strong, boy. I thought that was like a seven pounder. Come here. Another nice fish, pulling like a mule, man. Jeez. I thought that fish was gonna be like six pounds or something. Decent fish, though. Man, I'm running out of time. I'm running out of time. Hey, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not. Man, caught some fish today. Had to move, never really got to relax because of these storms brewing, but I had a few hours and chatterbait, chatterbait baby, it's going on right now. Until next time.